Hi, the purpose of this presentation is to show you how to use a key to encipher or encode a message. The message I will be enciphering or encoding is the one you see before you there. I prefer to use an Apple computer. Thank you very much. As part of the process of enciphering or encoding, I remove all the spaces contained within the message. The message will be processed one character at a time, ignoring any spaces that existed there previously. Now, to encode or encipher the message, I need to use a key. And my key consists of the characters in the two words, Bill Gates. Before you use your key, you have to convert each of the characters to a single digit number. And uh, the number assigned to each character depends on the position uh, that character has in the alphabet. It's all done in alphabetical order. So if you have an A, that's assigned the number one. If you have a B, that's assigned the number two. Uh, there's no C, there's no D. We do have an E, that's assigned the number three. G is, is assigned a four. I is five. My first L gets a six. My second L is assigned seven. S is assigned eight and T is assigned nine. So in accordance with the position in the alphabet, each character in the key is converted to a single digit number. Now, what I need to do is create some sort of a rectangular structure that will contain all the characters in the message to be encoded or enciphered. Now this rectangular structure will uh, be located just below my key. Now how big should that rec uh, rectangular structure be? How many columns should it have? How many rows should it have? Now the number of columns in this rectangular structure is actually defined by the number of characters in the key. I have nine characters in my key, therefore the rectangular structure will have nine columns. But how many rows? I've got 43 characters in my message. And I have nine characters in my key. So you get the number of characters in your message to be enciphered or encoded divided by the number of characters in your key. And what you'll get, well, in this case, you get this. Four, remainder, seven. Now, if the answer were five and no remainder, that would mean I have five rows. Because the answer is four and remainder seven, this means I have four full rows and the fifth row is only partially complete with seven characters. So here's the beginning of a process by which I'm trying to create a rectangular structure just below the key to contain all the characters in the message. Now, I've got a nine by five. That's a total of 45 cells, but I only have 43 characters. So I just simply ignore or not use the last two cells in that fifth row. That fifth row, uh, I only use seven cells in that fifth row. 
the first four rows are full. They're used completely. So now I'll try to begin to populate this rectangular structure with all the characters in my message. And uh, this is what I'll label as my first column because it has the number one assigned to it. Now that column can hold five characters. So I obtain the first five characters in my message and place them vertically down that column. Now my second column is this one here. I call it my second column because it, it has the number two assigned to it. It can hold five characters. So I take the next five characters of my message and place them vertically down here in the second column of my rectangular structure there. Now, the third column is this one here. It has a number three assigned to it. That's why I call it my third column. Unfortunately, it can only hold four characters. And so the next four characters of my message are stored vertically down here. The next five characters can be placed in my column number four. Column number five can hold five characters, so the next five characters go there. And I move through my message. Column number six can hold five characters. The next five characters of my message are stored vertically down that column. Column number seven can also hold five characters. Column number eight can only hold four characters. So the next four characters are stored down column number uh, eight. Column number nine can hold five characters. The last five characters are placed down column number nine. So what I've done is I've succeeded in populating this rectangular structure with all the characters of my message. Then what I do is I break this up going row by row, five characters at a time. So they're the first five characters that I obtain from the first row and I place them here. I then get the next five characters row by row. And there's a space separating each set of five characters. The next five characters going across row by row. Once I have a set of five, I start a new line. The next five characters row by row, going right through the message. Um, the last set will only contain three characters. There's three remaining there. So once I've done that, I'm pretty much finished. So what I've done is I've obtained my message. I have encoded it or enciphered it using my key, Bill Gates, to create this thing down here, which is a cryptogram. Now, this cryptogram will only make sense to anyone if they can decipher it. To decipher it or decode it, you're going to have to use the very same key. If you don't have that key, then this message will make no sense to anyone reading it.